I would like to thank you for inviting me to this very lovely and uh, interesting discussion. And I must say that all the predecessors who were speaking before of me um, uh, said many things that I'd, I would sign immediately because I also think um, that um, we are, um, uh, as a humanity, uh, before the change of the paradigm. And it can go anyway, either in authoritarian capitalism, uh, which will be very uh, similar to neo-fascism, or into uh, a new type of, I would say, socialism, where uh, we will have a really a different way of uh, working, uh, of uh, deciding in politics, uh, of making relationships between the nations between us as individuals, but also uh, our social re relationship with uh, nature and environment. Um, and I also think that uh, uh, what will really happen depends uh, mostly about our ability to organize uh, the classes, working classes, uh, who in these uh, catastrophic times are losing uh, out. out. Um, I want to speak uh, uh, firstly about how uh, we ended up in these catastrophic times. Uh, from the point of view of the former socialist countries uh, which uh, transformed into the countries with uh, market economy and uh, pluriparty parliamentary democracy. I think that the biggest illusion of the democratic people's movements uh, uh, from the former socialist countries at the end of the 80s, from the former centuries, that their biggest illusions was that we will live uh, in our new societies socially safe and protected as in socialism, but at the same time free and like happy consumers as the people they thought uh, are living in the most uh, developed capitalist countries. But instead of, of these dreams, um, they very quickly discovered that the Berlin Wall fell down on the socialist middle class and even more uh, on the weakest, the blue colored workers, the women, youth, elderly, ethnic minorities. Uh, for example, one could meet a doctor of history um, and a member of the Soviet Union Academy of Science surviving as a guide at the cemetery of the famous Russians in Moscow in 1992. Till 1995, the biggest industrial city in Slovenia, this is my country, which is called Maribor, became like Detroit in the big economic crisis uh, of the 29 uh, of the former century in the United States. The factories got closed one by one and their workers survived as poor uh, early retirees or daily migrants working in Austria. Till 1995, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, the country was devastated by the wars led by the nationalists looking for ethnically cleansed Greater Serbia and Greater Croatia. These wars ended without victor and got caught Bosnia and Herzegovina in a frozen, unresolved conflict, a truce which is called Dayton Peace Agreement. From 1992 till 2000, one could, could see how half a million of young educated Serbs, a nation of 8 million people, were leaving their country in order to avoid to be drafted in a never declared war against their former uh, compatriots. I think that the spring of the nations of the Central Eastern Europe and Southeastern Europe, who were running out of the Eastern Bloc from the Soviet Union and Federal Yugoslavia, ended up in something called the transitions. These transitions took different forms, from shock therapies like in Hungary, 
go and stop transitions like they were done in Bulgaria, in Romania, in Albania, gradual reforms which were characteristic for Slovenia, and the transitions by wars and armed conflicts uh, which were uh, typical for Western Balkan countries, and these were worst of them all. Political doctrine was very simple, copy-paste of liberal parliamentary pluriparty democracy combined with neoliberal macroeconomic doctrine. Slim state, budget, balanced budget, private property, open free market, individual economic initiative, this will solve all economic and social problems. This approach produ produced the same megatrends but executed with different tempo and different level of intensity in different countries I'm talking about. Privatization of the state or social property, merciless opening to the global market of goods and capital, but not of the workers, shrinking of socialist welfare states with universal access to childcare, education, culture, health, pensions, sec social security. This uh, welfare state uh, was heavy in services and weak in monetary transfers. But these social welfare states got weakened, then they were transformed into two-track private public systems, which uh, with means-tested weak safety nets. Labor market, uh, markets were deregulated, trade unions were practically annihilated, and all of these countries transformed into a semi-periphery of the developed global north with oligarchs, uh, weak rule of law, autocratic parties, high levels of corruption and organized crimes, uh, enormous, enormous brain drain, impoverished aging populations. 70% of them are living with earnings below average income. Becoming a full member of the EU and NATO became, became the only political strategy of development for most of these uh, nations. Once achieved, it became clear that the real trouble only begins, as the European Union, with its drastic differences in the levels of the overall development of its member states, is not a promised land, but is a complicated challenge with insufficient democratic tools for its solution. New member states are, uh, 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 are learning in a hard way that in the globalized neoliberal capitalism, the uh, rule number one proved to be that the wealth pours from the poor to the rich and that the rich becomes richer and the poor becomes poorer. Uh, it was much better said this and in much more details by my, my predecessors at this session. At the same time, the global framework started to change drastically. In the early 90s, a serial of conferences of the United Nations promised global civilization of indivisible human rights. The gurus of neoliberal capitalism preached the end of the history, but instead, peoples of the world from 2001, so early already, got the war against terror and indivisible human rights were uh, downgraded to uh, development uh, uh, to, to uh, Millennium Development Goals. On the top of it, in 2007-8, global financial and economic crisis struck. The United uh, States started to lose their place of the only global superpower, and a new geostrategic conflict started to develop. In this period, we could see uh, socialism for the banks and austerity capitalism for the working people. Climate crisis became obvious. Aggravation of the Israeli-Palestine conflict, uh, the wars in Afghanistan and in Iraq, uh, the destabilization of the Middle East, uh, the failed Arab Spring, the proxy wars in Libya, Syria, Yemen, Lebanon, triggered waves of refugees and economic uh, migrants towards Europe. European Union reaction to the financial crisis and to the refugee crisis was totally wrong. Instead of a new Keynesianism and well-balanced solidarity-based immigration politics, 
we got saving of the banks, drowning of Greece, austerity dogma of balanced budgets and chaotic immigration politics, where the migrants and the countries of the migration routes were left alone to cope with the problem. The intertwining of all these processes led to the decline uh, of uh, so-called moderate, moderate right, uh, liberal and social democratic political center, and to the race of political uh, instability, nationalism, populism, radical right, to Brexit, to the development of illiberal democracy in Turkey, in Poland, in, in Hungary, and lately we could uh, we could uh, look uh, we we could uh, we could um, uh, see uh, how uh, such illiberal democracy is trying to establish itself in my own country in Slovenia, and on the top of all of it uh, came the pandemic. The normal hustle of busy life stopped. Pe people got the time to listen, to think, to try to understand what the hell is really going on. It is not easy with all that fake news, with all that modern, privately owned uh, electronic communication tools, which are a blessing and a curse of our times. Some people noticed and took time and effort to explain to the public how the forces of social alienations got stronger, how the executive power, with very small number of exemptions, grab the opportunity to abuse the pandemic, to marginalize the parliaments, to stop social dialogue, to exclude all critical stakeholders from consultations, shush democratic debate, prevent the, uh, the public to challenge governmental decisions, how it, m it manipulated, used and abused the experts, how it found a way to feed its cronies and supporters with public money aimed to curb the pandemic how it produced scapegoats and national traitors and enemies and transferred the responsibility to the undisciplined, undisciplined people using politics of fear, politics of dividend impera and uh, uh, draconian limitations of human rights. Freedom of movement, freedom of speech, freedom of gathering, freedom of working, uh, of socializing and debating uh, instead of using the art of reasonable and peaceful persuasion, respectful persuasion, confidence building and encouraging of a social solidarity. I could speak about the examples in Slovenia where we, we got a total ban on all public protests. We got cr draconian fines for protesters even when they were wearing masks and kept prescribed physical distancing even for the college students not even 18 years old who were asking for the opening of their schools after six, six month long period of distance learning we, we got a case of finding a protester a well-known slovenian poet who was all alone reading aloud the constitution in front of the parliament. The protesters were uh, uh, using the slogan, death to the Janschism, freedom to the people, uh, rephrasing the slogan from the times of partisans uh, resistant to the Italian fascist occupation of Slovenia in the World War II, death to the fascism, freedom to the people. The party in power was accusing these protesters that they are complotting and calling for the murdering of the prime minister. In this pandemic, the shortcomings of the neoliberal political management and macroeconomic uh, economics became obvious. In developed countries of the world, capital itself all of a sudden understood that it cannot afford to leave the population out of work due to the this measure uh, of prevented health measures without the income or the vital economic branches without the state subsidies keeping them afloat. The famous fiscal rule of the balanced budget and the ban of any state interference into economy went through the window. Uh, Underfed systems of pu public health care, elderly care, and social protection 
and lack of badly paid care staff was all of a sudden understood as a bad economy. In pandemic, people realized that this could bring down the whole economy. Stigmatized, badly paid, mostly feminized professions were all of a sudden complemented by the government as socially key professions. People got with a chance to see how money was found to give generous bonuses to the doctors, but very modest ones to the nurses and cl close to nothing to the cleaners and the like, where even if their exposure to the infection was the same or even greater than the one of those doctors who were not in the direct contact with the infected patients. Outsourcing uh, uh, of development uh, and production of vaccines in so-called private-public partnerships with multinational companies came out as a complete failure. People understood why the state needs to keep a decisive role in protection of public health and social security, security of the population. People could see miserable abil uh, uh, abilities of state administration to govern the crisis due to the disastrous level of professionalism in politicized state administration. The faith in technocracy, in the political neutrality of the experts, in the technocratic nature of social issues has been proven wrong. The decisions of what comes first Profession, uh, protection of elderly from the infection or protection of elderly from dying from the social isolation from their loved ones is not an expert decision. This is a moral decision. It is a political choice and it has to be based on predominant democratically agreed social values. The same goes for the issue of the closure of childcare or uh, facilities or schools. What comes first? Prevention of the infection of the frail old parents who might get infected by their offsprings or mental and physical, uh, psychical health and normal education of the young generations. It is tragic that the death toll of the countries with draconian and autocratic uh, preventive measures came out higher than in the countries, very few of, of one of them, where the overcoming of the pandemic was based on more consensual, empathic, interactive governance. And now I would like to speak about resistance and resilience in pandemic uh, and, and show the example of Slovenia. Limitations uh, of uh, essential human rights uh, were done by the governmental degrees not by law as they should be and public protests were so massive under the draconian fines that uh, the lawyers organized free of charge legal aid for the rejection of accepting to pay these fines um, this was the trigger that the constitutional court had to decide about the governmental decrees and it stood uh, on the side of the rule of law Without these massive protests, this would have never happened. Uh, the end of this story is the bill that the opposition put into the parliament to overrule all paid fines based on un unconstitutional degrees, uh, decrees of the gov government. Uh, we have another very interesting case. The government fighting against the freedom of expression and the, uh, the independence of media is already for more than uh, uh, close to the two, two, 200 uh, days suffocating uh, our Slovenian press, uh, press agency because they want to change the, the leadership of the press agency and put it under their, their control. Um, uh, as a, uh, how, did they, how the government does it, they do not uh, pay uh, the public service of this press agency and the jobs of more than 150 journalists is at stake. Public action of the Journalist Association was organized to save the jobs of the employed by small personal donations. In some weeks, two month salaries for more than 100 uh, employee, employed journalists uh, were donated. 
Later on, in uh, hun uh, 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 later on, 160 visible opinion make makers uh, uh, signed a letter to the European Union leadership asking for the support to prevent authoritarian style of governing in Slovenia because Slovenia will be in the next six months a leader of the European Council. Uh, in this uh, th these are only some examples uh, of, of the resistance and, and the energy of ordinary people who try to, uh, to uh, overcome the pandemic and to avoid that the pandemic will be uh, an, a, a good pretext to turn Slovenia into an authoritarian uh, regime. In these uh, difficult times, uh, uh, which I have described, and they are lasting now for more than 30 years, women had it even more difficult than men uh, did. When transitions started, men started to die, but women could not even afford to die. They had children and elderly to take care of. They are the brightest example of resilience and resistance and also of politics of hope. And I would like to tell you about some lessons learned in the women's movement in Central and Eastern, uh, in Southeastern Europe. And I'm sure that very little of this is known to the wider international uh, public and even to the scientists. Uh, first of all, women were the fastest to learn. In crisis times, they, dis they discovered very quickly Individual strategies of survival do not work. Ignoring dangerous politics is mortal. Flying from the war is not an option for the majority of the poor people. Safety networks of the family and friends is not strong enough. Protection, in many cases, these networks uh, fell apart altogether. Cooperation in informal and formal civil society groups and organizations which women discovered as a tool to fight uh, against the war and against uh, difficulties of transition, especially if they can get international support, they are useful, but uh, they only mitigate the consequences of the bad mainstream uh, macroeconomic political decisions. It cannot prevent them to happen again and again and again. Then another lesson women learned that the ability of women to organize within this or that political party, even the biggest ones, is great. It's very important and it gives the women the opportunity to, to elaborate a feasible political measure or solution or politics or institutional mechanism. But it is uh, not doable if the party does not have a majority and it is not sustainable after the change of the majority in power. Decisive factor for uh, uh, sustainable progress in gender equality and similarly in any really democratic transformation of the society is building political will from the bottom up, reaching across parties, forging uh, as broad political consensus as possible. The most important tool for building a political will and the consensus is to establish across cutting issue coalitions to define its goal clearly based on a, a mi minimal common denominator of the stakeholders and to combine three tactics. The taxes, tactics of sandwich strategy, strategy, of parallel electoral campaign, of gradual uh, progression strategy. I have several examples of this politics of hope which led to the transformations in our societies. For example, in Slovenia in 1991, uh, such cross-cutting coalition uh, protected the article uh, on freedom of birth in the new Slovenian constitution. I have the example of the enactment of legal quotas in the Western, uh, Western Balkan countries from 1997 till today. Uh, in these countries, in all Every single one of them, the average of women in the parliaments of 7% grew to today's uh, uh, over uh, 
uh, I have an example in Serbia where women came together across all party divisions from civil society, trade unions, experts, and so on, and formed a women's platform for development of Serbia. This platform was capable to persuade a right-wing majority in the Serbian parliament to reject a bad law on gender equality, which they have prepared. This is a, a, a thing which never, ever happened in the Balkans before, and I think in many other countries, neither. Um, before I, I finish my speech, I would like to say something. I think that uh, fighting for gender equality is, in fact, for real gender equality, uh, it, from all its aspects, economic, social, mental, psychological, I do, uh, against violence, etc., is the fight for a different civilization. It is a fight for a different paradigm. But this fight cannot succeed if it stops only on the um, uh, issues of uh, 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 improving very bad life that women have in the neoliberal capitalism. It has to go over it. It has to go for a, a really transformation of the uh, paradigm. And uh, I think that what women learned in these uh, battles will be of a great help uh, in the future. But uh, without uh, a serious organization of the working classes and a serious alternative politics of the working classes uh, and uh, also of those who do not work because we, they have nothing to do, will uh, we'll not uh, change anything. I think that it is not possible anymore to get back to normal. There was no normality. Before the pandemic, there was no normality. To get back better means to build on people's experience of resistance and resilience. It means to transform our system of values, to rearrange political priorities, to change our way of life and work, to develop proactive participatory decision-making in politics. This is what I see as a politics of hope. Thank you.